Hi, this is Miss Downey, and I want to go over our lesson today, a quick lesson for Chapter 2, beginning Chapter 2, 2-1. Two and um, oops. It's, Chapter 2 is all about functions, equations, and graphs. The first thing that we talked about today was the four ways to represent relations. We have ordered pairs, we have a mapping diagram, a table of values, and a graph. Well, our bell work today, when we went back to our bell work, it said plot the following points on a graph. And then I gave you negative 3 and 4, 3 and negative 1, 4 and negative 1, and 4 and 3. So. So when you graph these with negative 3 and 4, you want to go the, the first, these are ordered pairs. And they're ordered in the terms of x and y, x being our x-axis and y being the y-axis. So if I say plot the numbers 3 and 4, I'm going to go over to negative 3 on my x and 4 on my y, and where they meet is where I'm going to plot the point. So go back to negative 3 on x, it's going to go back here to negative 3, and then you're going to go up to negative, to positive 4 on the y, right there. So where do they meet? Would these two meet? Right there. So you would plot a point right there, negative 3 and 4. And then for 3 and negative 1, you're going to go over to 3 on the x-axis, so over to 3, and up down to negative 1, so right there. And then 4, negative 1, over on x to 4, and down 1 unit to negative 1, right there. And then 4 and 3 goes over to 4 and up on the y-axis to 3. And there's your four points plotted. And that was our bell work, which prepared you to work with this key concept. These are the same four points. And it shows you the four ways to represent relations. So when we work with the four ways, the first way is just to have an ordered pair, which we just dealt with, an x and y. So um, we call those ordered pairs. That's your input and your output to a function. And the second way, and probably the newest thing to you today, is the mapping diagram. So uh, with the mapping diagram, you're going to take every x and every y, and you're going to make two columns, one for the x and one for the y. So look, we've got a negative 3, so there's negative 3, a 3, we've got a 3, and we have 4 and we only list it once in the mapping diagram. So now we've taken care of our x values. Now let's look at the y values. We're going to have a 4, a negative 1, and a 3. There they are, 4, negative 1, and 3. So after you do that, now you want to map them. Think of map like a driving map. Where are you beginning and where do you want to end up? Well, we started here with this point with a negative 3, and we're going to Four. The input was negative 3, the output was 4. So 3 to 4, and you're going to map that arrow. Now you're going to have a 3 and a negative 1, and that's going to map there. And then you have a 4 and a negative 1, so he maps up to there. And then a 4 and a 3, and 4 also maps to 3. So 4 is mapping to two different outputs. We have an input giving two different outputs. That's how you do a mapping diagram, and we're going to do more with this in a few minutes. So it's important that you understand how to work those. Table of values is just what you've been using all along. I call it a t-chart when you have your x and your y, your input, output. So this is your x values, 3, see when you look at these, 3, 3, 4, 4. I'm sorry, negative 3, 3, 4, and 4. So there it is, negative 3, 3, 4, 4. And over here you have 4, negative 1, negative 1, 3. So there they are, 4, negative 1, negative 1, 3. So that's how you do the table of values. So that's three ways. 
Now the fourth way is just to graph it, and that's how we started today's um, lesson, is we graphed those points on a number line. So those are the four ways to represent relations. Um, I wanted to point out what a relation is. It's a set of pairs of input and output values. You can represent a relation in four different ways, and as we just did. So the ordered pairs, mapping diagram, table of values, and graph. Our first problem that we want to look at is representing a relation. Well, this is about a man who jumps out of a plane. It says, when skydivers jump out of an airplane, they experience freefall. The photos show various heights of a skydiver at different times during the freefall, ignoring his air resistance. How can you represent this relation in four different ways? Well, we know our four ways. We just looked, right? Ordered pair, mapping diagram, table of values, and graph. So let's first look at what they're giving us. Well, they give us at zero seconds, that's when the timer starts. At zero seconds, he's 10,000 feet in the air. That's right as he's beginning to jump. As soon as he jumps, they hit the timer, and now four seconds have passed, and he's at 9,744 feet. Then he goes to eight seconds, and he's at 8,976 feet. Then to 12 seconds at 7,696 feet, and 16 seconds at 5,904 feet. So he has fallen all the way over uh, 16 seconds. So how do we show those four different ways? Well, if you look at these, you've got time and feet. Okay, so that is like your x value and your y value. So let's let time be x and feet be y. So time is our input, y is our output. So let's use those. So for our mapping diagram, we've got zero goes with 10,000. And then at four seconds, 9744, eight seconds, and so on, so forth. So that's how you do your mapping diagram. Now, ordered pair, you're just going to make an ordered pair out of them. That would be like 0, 10, 1,000. 4, 9, 7, 4, 4, and so on, so forth. So we've done, there's one way, two ways. Now what do we have left? A table of values and a graph. So now we still have our data up here, even though I've scrolled off the screen. Our data is there. So now we'll do our table of values. And again, it's just these x values to y values. Put them in. And there they all are again. That's the table of values. And now to graph it. I like the graph the best on this because it really shows how he's falling and how quickly he's falling as time passes. So we have time here on the bottom and our height here. So we know at zero seconds, just as he's beginning to hit the timer and jump out of the plane, he's at 10,000 feet. So he starts here. And as four seconds pass, he's dropped to about here. And eight seconds, he's here. Twelve seconds, down to 16 seconds. So he starts slowly, and then gravity starts pushing, and he goes faster and faster. So there's the four ways to represent our data. Your homework on your practice K, I went ahead and put it in here uh, because the, the table didn't come out with data in it, so I thought I would throw it here in the lecture as well. Um, it says a motion, motion detector tracks an egg as it drops from 10 feet above the ground, so it's another fallen object model. The table shows the height at various times. So we already have our, our xy table. So it says they want us to represent this data using mapping diagram, ordered pairs, and a graph on a coordinate plane. So the mapping diagram, what are you going to do? Well, you're just going to map. 0 goes to 10, that goes to that. As long as they're all individual numbers and none of these are repeated, it's just going to be a straight um, copy for your mapping diagram. Your ordered pairs, well, these are your x and those are your y. So your first 
ordered pair would be 0, 0, .0 and 10. Okay, and then so on and so forth. And then to graph these, my hint for you would be, notice that the smallest number here is 7. This is our y on our y. And then on our time in seconds, well, we're starting at 0, and these are all in tenths. So I would do 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 well, and that's as far as you go. 0.4. And notice that it starts at 7, so I would do the zigzag there to show that we're missing some numbers there, and I would start 7 right here. 7, 8, 9, 10. And that's how I would do these. So at 0 seconds, you're at 10. At 0.1, you're at 9.8, so not quite to 10. Okay, and so on and so forth. So there's the first problem of your homework. Uh, next, we're going to talk about domain and range. Domain is all of your inputs, your x-coordinates of your ordered pairs. And the range are your y-values, your outputs. So it says, um, use the relation from problem one, what are the domain and range of the relation? So when you look at all those points from the skydiver, here's all your ordered pairs. And Excuse me, they want to know what is the domain. So the domain is going to be equal to the set of all the x values here. So that's x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y. So you're going to do 0, 4, 8, 12, and 16. All of those red, the first values. And my curly braces aren't very pretty. I'll try one more time. Okay. These go in a curly brace showing that this is a set of related items. There we go. And now the range, you're going to do pretty much the same way, except these are all the y values. So it's going to be 10,000, 9744, 8, 9, 7, 6, 7, 6, 9, 6, and 5, 9, 0, 4. Okay, and uh, here they are right there. Okay, so that's how you do domain and range. Domain are your x values, range is the y. On your homework, again, here is your problem number two on your practice K, and it says what are the domain and range of this relation. So your domain, well, these are all your x values, so there's your domain, and these are your y values. Oops. Didn't mean to do that, sorry. Fix it. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so now there's your x and y values. So domain is the x values, range is the y values. Um, your next thing that we're going to talk about is a function. A function is a relation in which each element of the domain corresponds with exactly one element of the range. So it means for every input I have exactly one output. It wouldn't be one input has two outputs. It means every input has one output. So let's look. It says, is this relation a function? So let's look at our mapping diagram. Well, 3 goes to negative 2, 0 goes to 7, and 4 goes to 1. Well, each input domain is going ex to exactly one output. So yes, it's a function. Now let's look at the next thing. Let's make a mapping diagram for this one. It says 4 and uh, 8, 1, 6, and then we have 4 again, which we already have, so I'm not going to do it again. All right, now for the range, we have negative 1, 6, and another negative 1, another 6, and a 1. So there are my 
maps. So now I'm going to diagram them. So we're going to have 4 goes to negative 1, 8 goes to 6, 1 goes to negative 1, 6 goes to 6, and 4 goes to 1. Well, we were good until we did this last 4. See how 4 goes two different places? We have one input going to two outputs then we say no this is not a function because you have one input going to two outputs it has to be one to one not one to two okay and this on the on over here with the six we have many things going to six that's okay because still eight is going exactly one place and six is going exactly one place that's okay you just can't have an input going two places. And I explained this in class saying like, mm, I'll use this space right here. Let's say I've got a function y equals 2x and I'm going to make a t chart of my x and y values. So when x is equal to 0, I've got 0 times 2, right? And so that means that y is going to equal 0 when x equals 0. When x equals 1, you've got 2 times 1. That means that y is equal to 2. When x equals 2, y is equal to 4. Now, I can't come back again and say, OK, now that I'm going to plug in 1 again for x and get a different number. I'm like, I can't plug in 1 for x again and say, OK, now I'm going to get a 7. That's what this is saying. For every input, you can have exactly one output, not two. All right, so that was the example I used in class. So let's look at our got its real quick. So here's a domain and a range. So is this a function, yes or no? Well, this would be no, because I have one input going two outputs. So that's a no. And uh, for this one, Let's see, we've got a negative 7, a 9, a 14, and a 7. Then we have a 14, negative 7, 7, and another 14. Now let's map them. He goes there, he goes there, that goes there, and 7 goes to 14. So yes, this is because every input is going to exactly one output. Now, your homework was to determine whether a function, so you're going to do more of the same. Okay, you'll work it just like I did this previous page. Make, decide on this one off your mapping diagram, and then on four, you're going to have to make a mapping diagram and work it. Don't forget, you only list each number in each column one time. The next thing we learned about was a vertical line test. What a vertical line test, it will help us determine whether a relation is a function. It states that if a vertical line passes through more than one point on a graph of a relation, then it's not a function. So look at what they're saying. Here's a graph of a sideways U that goes on forever and ever. And we're going to take a vertical line, pass through it, and we see that it hits this graph in two spots. So, because it hits in more than one place, it is not a function. Okay? So, let's look at this problem here. They wanted us to use the vertical line test to decide if it makes a function or not. So, this, when you put your vertical line through, we're touching in two spots, so that's no. Here, it's touching one spot. I cannot draw a vertical line anywhere on this graph that would make it touch in any one line in more than one spot. So yes, this is a function. And here, they're showing us, well, I could draw a line there. That's one spot. It's touching one spot there. It touches one spot here. But on this one, it's touching two places. So that would be a no because of the two.
So on your homework, you have to decide if these are functions or not using the vertical line test. And that was the end of our lesson today. And we'll continue with uh, the rest of the lesson, the back half, on Monday. Thank you and have a good weekend. Stay safe and wear your seatbelts.